Okay, so what I've done now is I have mixed up this palette and it has, this is a light, and it's probably the darkest light I'm gonna want. If this is a medium color on the gray of uh, this palette, you can tell this is a little bit lighter, but it's gonna dry darker, so it'll be closer to this. It should be lighter than it, but it will be a lot closer. This looks like it's the same value, but this gray, but it, it's gonna dry darker, and this will be darker yet. So I don't even know if I'm gonna need those, but I wanna put basically some lights everywhere, and the lights that are warm. Um, to really separate, and if they're, if they're warm, they will look lighter than if they were cool. So, and this right here is, is white. So when I look at the still life, that's the lightest spot in the entire still life. There's another spot down here that's, that's you know, almost as light. So I want to use the biggest brush I can to put these lights in. Um, so I'm gonna start really big, I'll go smaller if I need to. So basically, this is a, this is a um, What is this? Is a ten, so it feels huge. But basically, here on the uh, wing, I'm gonna go like the full width, and then I'm gonna kind of turn it as I go down, because that is where it kind of drags out a little bit. I can turn that on the edge and soften that. On the top of the head, I'm gonna go on the edge thicker, and then just a little bit thinner. Probably need to get a little smaller. Um, that's okay. This, a uh, couple of things. Um, I, I can use it for some of the bigger areas. Um, this part of the, basically I'm gonna go across here and then down. That's where I see those, those lights. And I'm stroking lightly across it, so I'm, I'm scumbling. So where it drags, I have some of that gray showing through, and that gives me a nice, color vibration. Um, even if it's not quite the right color, that fish is a little bit yellower, it's okay because it's just a initial light. It's, remember this, it's going to dry darker. With acrylics, it is always, always, always going to dry darker. So if it looks too light, it's probably a good thing. If it looks like just right, it's not dark enough. It, it's, uh, it's, it's not light enough. Because if it looks just right, remember, it's gonna dry darker. So the most important thing. Um, then this, if I can get a little bit along that edge. Yeah, that works pretty good. So I'm just dragging it along to give me a little bit of, a little bit of movement in there. Here's the wing, which I can indicate a couple of, of the fin. Um, and, and in this area, there are just these little little shapes. I don't wanna to get too detailed in those because I can bring that out later. But here, we have the top of this, and then it goes down. Let's see, I can bring that out more. There we go. Um, there's some little hint at the side of those. So it, that, the sides of those sort of bulge out enough to almost get light. There's some light right here on the tail, and then there is some light right here. I really need to stand to the side to do this. Where you stand is so important. I can't stand in front necessarily. I kind of have to pull my mark. I have to come over here a little bit, which is good. Hopefully you can see it in the camera better. here, out, and across, and that's gonna make it really stand out against this. A couple of things I wanna mention while I'm doing this. You want to use as few brush strokes as possible, so think of it this way, every brush stroke has a purpose. So you don't wanna just mindlessly keep brushing. I'm gonna put the brush down, I'm gonna pull the mark, and then if I have to go back, then I'm, I'm changing the mark somehow. Maybe I'm softening an edge or I'm, I'm adding a wider mark to it, but every brush stroke has a purpose. You're not gonna be mindlessly putting brush strokes down. So think about that. The other thing is that um, you wanna think about how you hold your brush. So you, wanna, you don't wanna hold your brush perpendicular to the canvas. You wanna hold it at an angle, so you're actually pulling your mark and it's 
you're pulling it like you might a trowel. That's how you really pull the paint. So the paint is thick, it's on the end and the front, and your brush is pulling it like a trowel. So think about that. That's um, because if you try to paint it so that it's just a like a pencil perpendicular on the, uh, it, it really won't be able to pull any paint for you. It'll just kind of it'll run out of paint very quickly. So. Sometimes, you know, I think I put a gray in here. You see um, a branch that you can just suggest, you know, in here. I don't see any branches, but I do see, um, I do see the petals of this flower. The light's coming through it. I guess that would count. Um, this one is more sideways to me, so the petals take a different shape. And this one's kind of facing away, but they're, you know, they're not, they're, they're simple. They don't apologize. I forgot to turn the camera on for a moment. So I put some more lights, some scumbled very lightly, some lights in the background. And now I'm starting to add that middle gray color that I showed you at the beginning. That was basically very close to the same value as my gray matters palette. It's, um, it looks very lavender, but that's because everything else is so, opposite of that and what you basically I'm using it as a transition from the light colors into where the darker shadows so it is a shadow or maybe you could call it a mid-tone but basically it's just going to soften that turn sometimes I want it to be very soft like the part of the swan here this is much lighter here um, than it is up in the head for example the head of this one is very dark so I want to lighten this up in contrast so um, in just like the transition from light to shadow in the, um, in the urn, there's a, there's a lighter color there as well. This gets pretty dark over on this side, so I might lighten some of this up. Um, and I'll be careful not to, um, because I want to. I want this urn to really stand out against it, because that's what I'm seeing. But what I'm going to do is just put the lighter color in there, the lighter shadow, and scumble it out. So I get a vignette, and that that works really. That's helpful. And next, I'm just looking for things that need more of this blue. Like there's the the different color change of the table in the background here that needs some attention. And there are the flowers down here on the fish that they're, I've indicated just lights, but really they need some shadows as well. So that starts to give us a little bit more movement and changes and there is there's a movement in here this is uh it's getting a suggest like just a little tiny bit of light breaking across it but i don't want to make it too light so i just want to make it stand out against that the milk jug so brush that in and blend it out this is a little darker here so i can i can scumble those together there's a lot of nuances in this. So because it's mostly shadow, there's just a little bit of rim lighting. There's a huge variety of shadows. And so there's lots of reflected light. So what I'm finding, I actually need another mid-tone color. What I'm gonna do is mix that darkest light that I have and, and mix that with the lightest shadow. And there it makes another transition. So see on the urn, we have light and then two transitions and then dark. So I'm not blending. It's just important to think of it. It goes step by step. That's the best way to to get something to uh, to turn for you. Instead of trying to blend it, mix the colors and put down the steps. This wants to be darker though. I'm making that too light, and I'm only going to lighten up that shadow just a bit. So this is very very dark, and I think that's good. However, I'm going to just try another color to see if I can bring it back a little bit. So I can echo this wing here. Okay. Let's 
see how that works. Way back between this wing and that, I see a little bit of light. So it's a good, uh, it's a good little thing to be able to bring out if it if it's really. There. Basically, I want to take it as far as I can with the colors I have. It's just very simple, dark and light, dark, dark and light. And now I'm going warm and cool, right? Warm yellow and a cool blue, but they're still neutral. Um, I don't know, I just can't stress that that's pretty important that they're still neutral. I'll take my dark shadow and put it here. And then around this edge, this is a little bit darker. But then it fades, this part is lighter, so. Lots of give and take between the colors. All right, I'm wrapping this up and the next part will be part four and I will show you how to basically take this into full color.